Hi everyone, it's Aaron from WPKB and in this video we're going to take you through the basic options in WP Rocket. Uh, these include file optimization, which is concatenation and minification. We're going to go through lazy loading images and also some of the basic caching options that are available to you. To get started, you need to be logged into your WordPress dashboard and then go to settings on the left hand side and then to WP Rocket. It'll automatically put you into the basic settings panel uh, so we can get started straight away. The first option we have is lazy load. When you lazy load images, it means that the images won't actually appear in the browser until the individual viewing the website has actually scrolled down uh, to the point at which they appear. And that's when they'll be loaded. So that means that the page itself loads a bit faster and any images that aren't requested, say if you've got a very, very long page and the user decides to leave the page uh, before they've finished reading it all, uh, they won't actually be loading any images unnecessarily. I recommend lazy loading. It is a really simple, way of getting a little bit more performance out of your website. So we're going to turn that on. Uh, next, we come down to file optimization. This is minification, which is the practice of removing unneeded white space from files and concatenation, which basically means that for CSS and JavaScript files, those files can be combined. This means that when the page is being loaded, the browser puts less requests out to the server to actually download the resources that it needs. Uh, which can definitely result in a much faster page load. So we're going to turn that on for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Google Fonts. Uh, but as it says here down in red, concatenating files can cause display errors. So what we're going to do now is just save these changes. And to make sure it works, we'll open up our website in a new tab. And it seems to be working just fine. So for now, that's working without any problem. So we'll go back into the configuration tab and we'll go down to mobile cache. You can see here that the option is to enable caching for mobile devices. So, you know, iPads, uh, other tablets, Android phones, iPhones, Windows phones, and so on. It does note that you shouldn't turn it on if you're using other plugins like WP Touch, uh, which is a very popular uh, plugin to make a website or a WordPress website mobile friendly. Uh, so at this point, you can either choose to continue using one of those plugins if indeed you are, or you can disable that and enable WP Rockets mobile cache. It really depends on your website and the theme you're using, of course. Next, we can choose to enable the cache for logged in users. This will be a personal choice depending on your website. If it's only you and a few other people that are logging into WordPress regularly, uh, it may not make sense to turn it on because you want people that are logged in because they're most likely the people making changes to be able to see the changes as they're actually taking place. But if you've got a massive, massive user base, it may make more sense to actually enable caching for logged in users. We're just gonna leave this one off for now because uh, this is only a single user website. Uh, and just below this, we can enable the SSL cache. So that means for any pages that are served uh, over SSL or HTTPS, you can turn on caching for those. Of course, this is only truly useful if you actually use SSL on your website. And finally, we just come down to the clear cache lifespan. Uh, so 24 hours is the default period of time. You can change this to seconds, minutes, or days uh, from the default of hours and change it up as high as you want it. Maybe you want it to be uh, 55 hours. You can do that, no problem at all. What you choose here will most likely be influenced by how often your website's being updated. Uh, of course, if you would prefer the cache to have no lifespan, you can set that to zero. Uh, leaving it on 24 hours is absolutely fine when you're getting started and you can come back here and very easily make tweaks over the course of running that website to really try and get the most out of it. Uh, but that's all that we need to cover for this video. We've covered file concatenation and minification, lazy loading images, and just a few different caching options there. So we're going to wind up here. We're going to hit save changes so that those changes are all in effect. If you have any questions about anything we've covered in this video, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe for more.